Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, I am going to be showing you how you can get the Ashen Curse in Sea of Thieves. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can complete the Heart of Fire tool tale, where all of the tool tale journals are, and how you can get through the tunnels and waves of skeletons in the fastest way possible. Oh, and don't think I've forgotten about the spinning blade trap on the third tunnel, which is bloody impossible for anyone to do but I have a way that you can complete it first try, so make sure you stick around until then. Anyway, let's get straight into the video. First of all, what you're going to want to do is get a spawn on Ancient Spire Outpost. This is because it is the closest outpost to Morrow's Peak, and you need to start the tall tale on Morrow's Peak Outpost. Now once you reach Morrow's Peak Outpost, you just need to head on over to the Charred Parrot Tavern, and head on inside and just to the right of the woman behind the bar, there is the Heart of Fire tall tale book. You just need to vote on this, and then head back to your ship. Once you get back to your ship, we're going to be heading to Liar's Backbone, as this is the first part of the tool tale in which we need to complete. When we arrive at Liar's Backbone, we're going to be heading to the top of the island, and just on the top right side, there is this cave, and there's a lever just outside of it. You need to flick this lever, and then the cave entrance will open up. Now once the door opens up, we're going to be heading to the very back of the cave where you will see three stones in which you need to rotate and a lever to the left of it. Now just set the combination of the stones in the way that I show you just here, and then hit the lever. Then the broken heart made out of wood will open up revealing the mysterious key and Stitcher's notes. We're going to be taking the mysterious key and collecting Stitcher's notes and heading back to our ship. But as you can see just before we do that, there is this journal on the right which we need to read. Now we've read it, we're going to be heading on back to our ship. Once we reach our ship, we're going to be heading all the way down to the Devil's Thirst, and just off of the north coast is the vault in which we need to open up with the key. Once we reach Devil's Thirst, you're going to see this lava trail in the water leading down under the water. You're going to need to follow this to the vault, and you will see this pedestal in which you need to put the key into. Just insert the key, and then the door to the vault will open up. I'm going to do a time lapse of me swimming through the water as it's a pretty fast swim, just so if you get confused you can watch the video and see the exact pathing I take. But uh, if you want to skip to it, just check the description, I should have put a timestamp, or the, the video will be chaptered so you can just skip to the next chapter. Once you reach the end, you will now be in a room with three different paths in which you need to go down. Now just before we go down any of them, if you come just in front of the middle path, there is a journal in which you need to read just on this rock here. Now as you can see, there are three paths in which you need to go down, and there is a way to open all three of these. Now as you can see here, there is a barrel full of fire bombs. This is because you need to set one of these skulls just up here on fire with one of the fire bombs, and it will open the corresponding door. To open the first door, as you can see just here behind me to the left, there is this skull which you need to set on fire. And just above me, there is this skull which corresponds to the middle door. And if I head on over to the third door on the right and pan to the right of that, there is another skull in which I need to set on fire to open up the right door. Now I'm just going to be going in order, so I'm going to be opening up the first door just by setting the far left skull on fire. And as you can see here, now the far left door is opening. Now down in the description, I have left three links to path one, path two, and path three. They're all unlisted videos, which I did. It's literally just a run through of me beating the pathing. No editing, no talking. It's literally just me going through it. So if you get confused, you can go and watch that. And once you reach this trap where you have to run through fire and you have to jump over a capstan with spinning fire, you will see this lava jump which you need to complete, jumping from rock to rock. Now just on the left of this, there is a journal which you need to read. This is important, you have to read these journals. And uh, yeah, once you read this journal, you can just move on and complete the first path. Now I recommend using the traps in each of the paths because they complete the skeleton waves a lot quicker. So as you can see here, I'm just setting this skull on fire and the capstone is gonna spin and I'm just gonna be jumping around it, keeping these skeletons in the fire. 
Now once you reach this lava pool on the left there is a pulley in which you need to pull down and you will see these rocks emerging from the lava. You probably don't need to lift them all the way, you could probably lift them about halfway and sword lunge over to the far right one. But I went the safe way and raised it all the way and just hopped from stone to stone. However these stones do slowly go back into the lava so you need to be relatively quick. And then you're going to get to this part where you need to jump over another bit of lava onto this ladder and just next to the door on the right there is a lever in which you need to pull to open the door. Don't get confused because I actually missed this and it took me a minute to realise that there was actually a lever there. Now once you pull this lever you will be in this final room with Captain Flameheart's ghost ship and you will also see Stitcher Jim completing the ritual with the chest of rage. All you're going to have to do is run over to Stitcher Jim, wait for him to run away, then pick up the Chest of Rage and go through the rest of the tool tale. You're just going to be completing more waves of skeletons and jumping through traps, so uh, it's nothing too crazy. Now as you can see here, when I'm taking out the waves of skeletons, I am actually using the Chest of Rage to my advantage by sword swinging it and shooting it so it gets aggressive, and then eventually it explodes, killing all the skeletons around it. This is a very good tip so you don't have to just sit there sorting all of the bloody skeletons, you actually set them on fire using the chest of rage. Now as you can see here I'm going to give you another time lapse of me swimming through the water with the chest of rage as it might get a little bit confusing for some of you. Feel free to skip past this if you already know what to do using the chapters and the timestamps in the description. Now once you get to the very top of the water you're going to see Captain Pendragon over on the shore. You need to head on over to him and just give him the chest of rage and you have completed the tool tale. Now what you're going to need to do is head all the way back up to Morrow's Peak Outpost and start the tool tale again. Head back up to Liar's Backbone, do the exact same thing getting the mysterious key. Then head all the way back down to Devil's Thirst. All over again you're going to need to do this another two times. But now, let's move on to path number two. Yet again, for path number two, there is a video in the description showing you exactly how I did it, so feel free to go and watch that if you get lost or confused at any point. Once again, when you are completing the skeleton waves, don't forget to use the traps which are given to you. This one is probably the better trap of the three paths, as a swinging wood thing <laughs> just comes down and destroys the skeletons instantly so i recommend using this there are two traps one which goes one way one which swings the other way it will one hit the captain at the end so definitely utilize this now once you complete this room with the skeletons you will see this tunnel leading you to another part of the tool tale however just on the left of this tunnel there is the journal in which you need to read so make sure you don't miss this now at this part of the tool tale i know some of you may get confused Used, so all you have to do is raise your lantern and set the skeleton's torch on fire then come back here use the pulley till the skeleton gets all the way to the ceiling and sets the skull on fire and then the door will open up. Now once you get through this room you're just going to have to head on over to this capstan and actually raise it when the fire goes out. Don't worry you'll take a little bit of damage so make sure you're not too low when you do this. And then once you raise the capstan you just need to turn around and head on over to this little bit of wood and just inside here is the lever which you need to pull. And now you are done for path 2 and just need to go and do the exact same thing you did for path 1 using the chest of rage. Now finally on to path number 3. I'm just going to set this skull on fire and head on through the door yet again. There is a link down to path number 3 in the description it should be near the top so make sure you go and watch that video if you get confused at any point. Now at this spinning blade trap most of you will get stuck for a very long time uh, so make sure you actually pull this lever because it stops the first blade spinning but even so you're probably going to try jumping over them at some point trying to get good timing but no matter what you do you will probably die. It is possible to do but I recommend doing it this way. Now as you can see here I've just spawned in from the ferry of the damned. I'm going to come on over to this wooden platform just I try to jump on the barrel and I fail and then I jump onto this lamp then jump onto this bit of wood sticking out from the rock and then I just sword lunge straight over the trap. Now I think I got a bit of good timing as I hit my head on the rock and if the blade was spinning at that time I would have died but as you can see I still made it through and it's a lot easier than doing it one at a time. Now as you can see here I'm just using the pulley to raise the door at the very end of this tunnel where there are traps that you don't want to set off using the pressure pads. However if you do it's not the end of the world they won't insta kill you it's just flame traps so as you can see I accidentally set them off and I'm absolutely fine. 
Now, in this next room, there is the spike run, as there are spikes pushing their way out of the side of the wall, and you're just going to need to try and avoid them using these cubbies on the right. Now, in the second cubby on the right, there is the last journal which you need to read. Now, once you read this final journal, you will receive a commendation letting you know that you have complete the journals. So now you, all you need to do is complete this last final run of the third pathway, and then you have the Ashen Curse. But other than that, you've pretty much got on the Ashen Curse now. So um, yeah, simple as that. 10 minutes, done. Easy peasy. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe. We are growing crazy fast and we're loving to see the growth and the community grow together and just come together in our Discord. We actually have nearly 300 members now and about 80 to 90 people active every day, talking to each other, getting games started up with each other, going and stacking Fort of the Damned, all that kind of stuff. So it's absolutely insane to see and it's actually a dream come true. All we want to do is help you guys in Sea of Thieves and provide you entertaining content. And it seems like a lot of you are enjoying it. So that's been a really big boost of motivation recently. So thank you very much. Uh, all your support is appreciated. All the little comments, all the likes, all the subs. Every one of you are noticed. But other than that, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.